Good Hello, guys. Good evening to everyone. Uh, well, as far as I know, in some parts of the country, it's raining. Is apparently we have a well storm or a hurricane is coming in uh, all the way through through El Salvador, but I'm not sure about it. Probably in some parts of, of the El Salvador, it might be raining and some others probably not. So thank you so much for those that are always on time. I appreciate your responsibility because I understand that some of you are probably a little bit tired, but still you're here. So thank you so much for that. Uh, well, guys, first of all, I would like to know if everyone can listen to me. Can you guys listen to me? Good evening, teacher. Yes, teacher. Yes. Good evening. Good evening. Thank you very much for confirming that. So as usual, guys, I'm going to ask you, as every single day I do, questions regarding to the last topic that we saw. Yesterday, we saw a list of adjectives of appearance. So today, I'm just going to ask you like one adjective, probably. I will say it in Spanish. And and I would like to verify if you kind of get the use of that. So that's what I'm going to do. First of all, uh, well, I'm going to ask you, Eliud. Okay, so I would like to know if you remember how do we say gordito? Do you remember that? How do we say that? Eliud, do you remember? No, teacher. I not remember. Really? Aha, uh -huh. Carlos Regalado. Do you have any idea of how do we say that? Aha, uh -huh. estaba buscando las imágenes, vea. Aha, uh -huh. got you. Got you there, okay? So, how do we say that, Carlos? Do you have any idea? Yeah. <clears throat> no, you, you don't have any idea about it? How do we say gordito? No, okay. Can someone or does any one of you remember how do we say that? Teacher, I remember it is chubby. Yeah, that's the way we say it. It's not chubby, but we say chubby. We say chubby, okay. But that's the one I was looking for. Now, let me see. How do we say uh, desaliñado? Does any one of you remember how do we say that? William, do you have any, any idea of how do we say desaliñado? No, teacher, I don't remember. <laughs> but I appreciate your honesty. I mean, all of you are being honest. I appreciate that. I mean, if you don't know it, you don't know it. That's, that's okay. So um, does any of the other ones of you, I mean, there's... 13 people here. Well, 14 actually. So does any of the others remember how do we say desaliñado? The other ones? No? No idea? Blender teacher. It's scruffy teacher. Scruffy. Excellent. Scruffy. We say scruffy. Now, scruffy. thank you very much, Daisy. Okay. Say, um, uh, or what is the polite way of saying, saying like delgado, the polite way. I'm not talking about the impolite. I'm talking about the polite way to say delgado. Skinny. Skinny. Mm. Slender. Slender. Because uh, skinny, slender. remember? Skinny, I mean, skinny is correct. See? Está correcto, but that's impolite. It's is no es educado, but if you say slender, it's like polite. Thank you very much, Daisy. Now, let me see, how do we say uh, that someone, alguien es flácido, que no se ejercita mucho? How do we say that? Flabby. Flabby, thank you very much. That's the way we say it, we say it flabby. Thank you. Uh, now, can I, can I say, um, like, for example, um, 
uh, someone, alguien que es, que le, le diríamos en nuestro, nuestro like Spanish, algo cholito, algo fornido. Does anyone of you remember how do we say that? Stocky. Stocky. That's the way we say it. Thank you very much. So what about the other ones, guys? You look kind of confused today. Like, I don't remember something like that. So what happened? Is you really don't remember? Is, is, that, is that for real? Well, it, it looks like you don't remember. That's what it looks like. So um, what is the difference? Can someone tell me what is the difference between uh, or what are the words that I used to refer or to say a una mujer bonita? How do we say that? That's very easy. Beautiful. Beautiful, that's what we say it. So how do we Teacher. say it? Yes. Good night. Uh, only listen to class because in my how when I well live, it's raining a uh, lot. Yeah, I understand. I can listen to the rain, so don't worry about it. Uh, okay, teacher. Thank yes, you. Yes, I understand. Don't worry. So I know, as I said at the beginning, probably in some parts of El Salvador, it might be raining. In some others, probably not. So yes, teacher. Uh, Thanks Thank for you. letting me know, Katya. So now, how do we say that a man, or what's the adjective? ¿Cuál es el adjetivo que usamos para describir a un hombre? Like, guapo o bonito, something like that. What's that? Handsome. Handsome, yes. That's the one. All right. Now, the last one. Este va a ser el último. How do we say, uh, or how do we, what's the adjective que utilizamos para llamar a una mujer proporcionada? What's that? What's Corby. that? Corby. Um, yes and no. Yes, because when we say when we say curvy, it's porque decimos curvilínea. But proporcionada, that's another. Shapely. 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 That's the way we say it. shapely because curvy is curvilínea. That's what it is. So thank you so much for those who participated. I mean, I understand that probably you didn't have enough time like to study the adjectives. That's completely understandable. Some of you probably work during the day and I understand that the, this, uh, it might be difficult for you. But I mean, we're gonna try to do our best. So today guys, we're going to change a little bit and today we're going to focus a little bit on um, grammar. And today's topic, guys, is going to be about particles. Have you ever heard about particles in the past? Or is it the first time that you're listening to that word, particles? Do you guys have any idea what particles stand for? D, maybe D. Uh, probably, yeah, probably. So, but when you listen to the word particles, what does it come to your mind? Do you have any idea or something, or you really do not know what a particle is? No? Well, it sounds like no. Well, it looks like no. All right. Yeah. What? Can be can be that uh, the articles is the word uh, the is the word the right uh, before the subject in the sentence. Yeah, yeah. I mean, what you're saying is correct. Yeah, okay. That is correct. But you're talking about articles, and I'm talking about particles. Oh, I'm sorry. I only but, said article. <laughs> no, but I mean, sorry. what you said, what you said is correct. Okay, what you I'm sorry, said, but you were talking about something else. Okay, but don't worry, it's fine. Now, so let me just go ahead and share the screen with you so you can have an idea what I'm talking about. Have you ever heard about frisal verbs in your life? Do you have an idea what a frisal verb is? No. 
Verbos frasales. Have you ever heard that before? ¿Alguien ha escuchado eso? No. No, teacher. Okay. All right. So today we're going to. Your grammar too. Uh, yeah, I mean, yeah. So. Yes, teacher, but I don't remember in this moment. I know, I know, I know. So there's a lot of uh, a lot of things that we're going to try to see today, but mostly of them we're going to focus on uh, phrasal verbs because phrasal verbs are very used in this topic like particles because they involve a lot of those things. So first of all, we're going to have like a brief information or a brief definition about what a particle is. So in this case, I would like to have Joanna Cristabel, are you there? Hello? Are you there? Well, I really don't know if you're there. I always see you that you connect, but you never say anything like you're just there. So I really don't know if you're there or not. So, um, all right, so let me see Andrea Mariel. Andrea Mariel, please go ahead and help me reading that part. Okay, teacher. What are part, how do you, how do you say that? Particles. Particles, yeah. Thank you. Are functions words that express grammatical relationships with other words? Functions words are words that perform the. Um, I don't know. I don't know how to say that. Definite. Thank you. Definite grammatical functions, but that lack the. <laughs> Definite. Definite. Lexi lexical meaning. Okay, so uh, I mean this this brief explanation is a little bit confusing too because it's not it's not like simple words. But in simple words, what we are going to say that particles are things that are going to help us to connect one word with other word. In simple words, that's what it is. I mean, uh, this is like the process preposition teacher a little bit of like that just it's like very similar to that just with a small difference and that is small difference is what i will need you to understand today because if not you might think that that's going to be a preposition but it's not going to be but it's a little bit similar to prepositions okay so uh in simple words as i was saying Particles are going to be things that are going to help us to connect one word with another word. So let's see some things, or well, let's try to verify. First of all, uh, let me see. Elba, Elba Carolina, can you please help me reading from here till the first period, till here. The first grammatical construction in the English language that contains uh, a few words that put you as a particle in the passive verb. Okay, stop it there. Thank you very much. Now, Emily Lopez. Emily, help me from here. Yes, teacher. Mm -hmm. for, uh, for, how do I say that? Why right, I so that? Frisal. Frisal. Frisal verbs consist of a verb followed by one or more P words. The P words of phrasal verb functional as a participle. Example of phrasal mm -hmm. verbs include the following. Okay, thank you very much. Now, uh, as we can see there, it says that in phrasal verbs, we are going to find a lot of uh, particles. That's what we call the P word. The P word is a particle. So in other words, uh, when you see, this is a, um, a phrasal verbs. Le llamamos phrasal verbs a dos palabras que al unirse 
con un, o, o a un verbo que al unirse con otra palabra tiene un significado diferente. Why? ¿Qué pasa si yo digo call? ¿Qué entendemos por la palabra call? Llamar. Llamada. Llamar. Llamar. That's the verb, llamar. But, si yo le agrego el particle of, ya no significa llamar, sino que significa cancelar. For example, I can say, the meeting was called off. Or my boss called off the meeting. ¿Sí? Mi jefe canceló la reunión. So as you can see, the particle or the function that the particle has in phrasal verbs is very, very like, you know, it, it gives them like a different meaning. When a verb is um, joined with a, a, a particle, automatically it gives a different meaning to that verb. For example, if I say laying on, it's like if I say criticize, like someone is criticizing my job. For example, I can say, um, Someone was laying on, laying on my homework. It's like, alguien estaba criticando mi tarea. You see, it's like, here we have even more. <clears throat> and here we have two. Y aquí tenemos dos particles. Que son in and on. So what I really need you to understand in this part is that in phrasal verbs, we will have a lot of particles. And these particles are going to, are going to, you know, like give a different meaning to the main verb. Because it's very, as the first example that we saw, it's very simple if I just say call. Because when I say call, automatically I know, okay, that verb means llamar. So, but when I add the particle off, it changes a little bit. Now, it's, it's necessary to understand that those particles that we are, uh, that we can see here on the slide are not necessarily the only ones that exist. There's a variety of them, but uh, first of all, uh, it will be very nice if you kind of understand what phrasal verbs are. In the English language, phrasal verbs are very used because, you know, Americans or people who speaks English, it, um, they usually love that because it's like they make you or it sounds like you're a native person when you use phrasal verbs instead of saying or using the verb that you should use. For example, it will be really easy if I only say, my boss canceled the meeting, right? It will be easy. Porque todos sabemos que cancelar, yo puedo decir como. Verbo cancelar, cancel, I can say that. But when you say, my boss called off the meeting, it's like, wow, like it's like makes you sound as a native person. I don't know if you understand the idea. Yes, are, are we understanding? Yes, teacher. All right. Yes, teacher. All right, so we have some- And things. we can put, in, in a, in, we can put, uh, Subject in the middle, for example, uh, my girlfriend cut me off. Cut you off? Did they? Cut me yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I uh, mean, one example. Mm -hmm. Did they? Yeah, yeah. We... My girlfriend cut me off. Okay. <clears throat> yeah, we can definitely do that. We're going to see those rules later on, but right now it's just an introduction to phrasal verbs, let's say it like that. So we have pass on, when we use pass on, we, it's like if we mean transmit. When we say rule out, it's like if we mean eliminate and we will say throw up, vomit. I mean, why am I, why am I telling you this? Because as I said at the beginning, we can use the verbs that we already know. I mean, I can simply say, uh, like, I want to vomit. Quiero vomitar. Si? Si yo digo, I want to vomit, will that be okay for you? Or she wants to vomit. T-shirt. Mm -hmm. In Spanish, uh, 
De hecho, yo estoy viendo una serie y exactamente decían esa, esa, esa phrase. Yeah, of course. It's, so, it's throw up. Yeah. Yes. It's, it's like, I mean, por eso les decía, si usted dice, uh, like, ella quiere vomitar, she wants to vomit, or she's vomiting, está vomitando. That's completely understandable, ¿sí? Una persona o una persona nativo hablante del idioma le va a entender que usted quiere vomitar. That's perfect. ¿Cuál es la diferencia entonces? Cuando usted dice, I'm vomiting or I want to vomit, usted está utilizando el lenguaje no incorrecto, está correctamente, gramaticalmente bien, pero se escucha como que si usted estuviese aprendiendo inglés, ¿sí? Se le nota que está aprendiendo So it's different, es diferente, si usted en vez de decir vomit or vomiting, usted utiliza un phrasal verb y dice, oh, I want to throw up, ¿sí? Y quiere decir lo mismo, quiero vomitar, I want to throw up, oh, she's throwing up, you see? So it sounds like you're a native, suena como que usted es nativo del idioma, so that's the only difference, okay? So that's what we're... Uh, what we're trying to understand today or to, to learn actually. So let's move on to another part if there's no any other questions. So we're still going to be with the Freisel verbs. And here we're going to have the differences or how we can use Freisel verbs. That's what Boris was saying, like the example he said before. And here we are going to understand which Freisel verbs can we say or can we put like a subject in the middle and which ones we cannot. So first of all, it says here, phrasal verbs are usually two words phrases consisting of, number one, it can be either a verb or an adverb, it can be either a verb or a preposition, or we can have a verb plus an adverb plus a preposition. So it says that it can have a literal meaning, easy to understand, or it can also have an idiomatic meaning. So when someone tells you give up, it says that it's a phrasal verb that means stop doing something, which is very different from give. That's what I was saying. If we use the normal verb as it used to be like, if I say give, if I say um, call, those are simple verbs that we already know that they have their, their own meaning. But when I use a particle next to it, or I connect another word next to the, to the bird, it can change the meaning. So do you guys have any idea of what give up means? What does give up mean? Don't stop to do something. I, I, I mean, but the literal, the literal, or when, when someone tells you that, uh, what, what comes to your mind? If I tell you, do never give up on your dreams, what would you want? Wake up. Renunciar. Renunciar, yeah, it can be like, renunciar, pero no en el... No, no re como rendirse. Como rendirse. rendirse, exactly. O no darse por vencido. That's, that's what it means. All right, so as you can see, literally, it changes completely the meaning that if I say give, that's not going to be not even 1% of the meaning if I say give up. So that's what, we're, that's what we're focusing on today. So let's have, or let's see, the types of fry cell verbs that we have. As it says, we have four types or phrasal verbs. What is the first one? Verb plus particle. And here we have an example. Number two, it says verb plus particle plus subject, verb plus subject plus particle. You see, we have a variety. Number three, we can have either a verb, particle, object, or we can have verb, particle, inseparable, and we can also have separable. So we're going to see, or Boris, you, we're going to see what you asked before. So in the first part, which is the verb plus a particle, we have 
look out, look out. We have, we set off on a journey. As we can see here, what is, what is the particle that we have here on the first one? Look out. The particle is out, the word out, because what does look mean? What? Mirar. Mirar, yeah, or, or like to, to, yeah, to observe something. If I say set, what do you guys understand by the, by the verb set? It's like organizar. I'm sorry, repeat that again. Organizar. Organizar o ordenar o organizar algo. But if we add, si le agregamos el particle off and we say set off, it's like started. It's like if we say started. So that's just the first one. So let's go to number two. And this one, I need you to pay a little bit of attention because if not, you might get lost. And phrasal verb number two, this is the question that Boris was asking before. And it says that phrasal verbs with an object that it can be either after the particle or between the verb and particle. So we have two formulas actually. We can have verb object particle or we can have verb particle object which means that if I use either one of them, both of them are going to be correct. It doesn't mean that if you, that you have to select or that you have to choose from either one of them. No, you can use both of them. So we have the same example and we can say, I'll throw the rubbish away. So as you can see the verb throw and the rubbish, which is the object plus the particle, which is away. But in example number two, I can do things a little bit different. Why? Because I can put together the verb and the particle. And after that, I can add the object. So if I say, I'll throw the rubbish away, it will be the same if I say, I'll throw away the rubbish. Because we're saying the, main, the same thing. It's like as in Spanish, we say, El orden de los factores no altera el producto. So that's what we're saying. This is basically that. Because as you can see, we're just using the same, the same thing or the same uh, phrasal verb, but in different positions, okay? So we have another example. Take your shoes off or take off your shoes, which is the same thing. Does any one of you have any questions so far? No question. Tell what I mean, the two, eight, verb plus object plus, plus participle. What I mean, oh. to send. Mm, I, I don't understand your question. Eh, in español, eh, ¿qué significa el 2A y el 2B? Oh, no, I mean, no es que tengan un significado, solo son eh, dos fórmulas que lo podemos simplemente cambiamos de lugar. Sure, but in, in Spanish, what I mean the, in español, ¿qué significan las dos? I throw the rubies away. Eh, I, I don't know if you, si tú quieres decir en el, la palabra. En el, ej, en el ejemplo, ¿qué significa I throw the rubies away? Oh, if, if you say I'll throw, I throw, tiraré la basura. I'll throw the rubbish away. And if I say, take your shoes off, quítate los zapatos. So en la número dos, si yo digo, I'll throw away the rubbish, voy a decir lo mismo, tiraré la basura. Y si yo okay. take off your shoes, quítate los zapatos. So the same thing. Eso es lo que estábamos diciendo, que el orden de los factores no altera el producto. ¿sí? Solo cambiamos de lugar el particle o el objeto, pero al final el significado sigue siendo el mismo. Ok, so, thank you, okay. O sea, que so, se puede utilizar de las dos formas. Yes, two. This is, this is why I told you at the beginning, we gotta be a little bit careful because you can use either one of them. If you think that, 
letter 2A is, is easier for you, you can use 2A. But if you think that 2B is easier for you, okay, let's go. And you can use 2B. It's up to you. You can decide which one you want to use. Teacher. Yes. Rubbish. Rubbish is basura. Yeah, rubbish is basura, the same as trash, the same as there's garbage. A garbage. Yeah, those are synonyms. Todos son sinónimos, which means the same thing. Que significan todos lo mismo. So if but you, rubbish no is idiom, teacher. Eh, what, what was that? Rubbish no is e idiom uh, something. Idiom, id, idiom something. I don't, uh, well, I don't get why. I don't remember the word, <laughs> teacher, sorry. <laughs> Ra Ravi, I mean, idioms, what do you want to say? Idiomatica, something like that? Um, I remember idioms, I think idioms parecidos a los phrases or others. Idioms. I don't remember in this moment. Sorry. No, it's it's okay. I'm, I'm trying to understand what you're trying to say because uh, idioms, I don't know. Uh, lo que entendería for idioms, quizás algo idiomático or, or something. Uh, para uh, for example, in this uh, Guanaco something. Say that again. Así como decimos aquí, digamos, guanaco como sinónimo. Pero I remember idiom. I, I no, don't remember. No, teacher, eh, eh, ya, ya, lo que trata de decir es que eh, es como otro, es como nosotros aquí nos dicen que usamos el caliche. Entonces, Ajá, yes. este, es, es como un, un ella pregunta si eso es, eso es un, un, un lenguaje eh, ¿Cómo le llamamos Como callejero. callejero allá? No, pues. no, informal, informal entre amigos. Oh, oh, ok. Uh, Aparte, eso lo entiendo yo. Ah, ok, ok, yeah. All right, so it, it, if we take it in that way, like, no, not necessarily. No, in this case, no. If you say the rubbish, if you say garbage, or if you say trash, all of them are correct words and very formal words. It and sounds synonymous. It's, yeah, the only thing is that they are synonyms from each other. So it doesn't mean that if you use one, you are going to be talking formal, or if you use the other, you are going to be talking informal. No, the three of them have the same meaning. So it doesn't, it doesn't mean that if you use either or, you're going to be changing from professional to streets language. No, that's not. Thank you, teacher. Okay. <laughs> okay. All right. So uh, no, that's not a problem. It's okay. So uh, as we can see, Pero, uh, uh, in, in alguna ocasión, uh, hay ciertas personas que, que para decir, uh, tiro, uh, voy a tirar la basura, eh, o quiero tirar la basura a mm -hmm. esta hora, I want to take off the trash this time. Take, take off. Correcto. Take off. I, sí, para decir, es hora, it's time to take off the trash. O the, take the trash off. Uh, but in that case, if you're using take off, it's quitar. You know, it's, ah. quitar. so we can, if we say, I want to take the, the trash off, es como que tú tengas algo como, Lo puedes usar de manera literal o de, de, de una manera like fiction, como ficticio, que tú puedes decir que está sucio o tienes alguna basura por dentro, so you take it off. Ah, ok, ok. Yeah, uh -huh, yeah, and that way we can say it like that. So, um, good questions, actually. So I want, I want you to ask those questions that you have so you don't have any doubt at the end. So in the part of note, as we can see there, it says that when object is a pronoun, object pronoun, si ¿sí sabemos cuáles son los objetos pronombres? Para I, para el pronombre personal I, 
¿Saben cuál es el object pronoun? ¿No? No. Eh, so, the object pronouns, los objetos pronombres, son aquellos que usamos para to, to avoid, para evitar doblemente repetir la misma cosa. Si yo digo, si yo tengo el pronombre de personal pronoun I, el objeto pronombre es me. El personal pronoun you, el objeto pronombre es you. Personal pronoun we, the object pronoun is us. Personal pronoun they, the object pronoun is them. So we have all of them, see? So what it's saying here that when the object is a pronoun, for example, them, it can only go before the particle, not after it. So tenemos el mismo ejemplo. ¿Qué es lo que sucede aquí? Yo estoy omitiendo. No, reflexive pronouns son diferentes, Melvin. Esos son myself, yourself, themselves, and so on and so on. So I'm talking about object pronoun. ¿Qué es lo que pasa aquí? Si nos fijamos, if we can see on the first sentence, en la primera oración, we have, I'll throw the rubbish away. ¿Qué es lo que voy a hacer o qué es lo que yo puedo hacer con un object pronoun? Fácil, un object pronoun me va a omitir repetir o decir la palabra rubbish. Si yo me refiero a rubbish, yo estoy hablando de una cosa en tercera persona. ¿Cuál es el pronombre que yo utilizo para cosas y para animales? It. 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 Yes, that's the personal pronoun, it. So, cuando yo cambio ese personal pronoun it a un objeto pronombre, siempre va a ser it. So, ahora vengo y digo, I'll throw it away. ¿Qué es lo que hice? En vez de decir the rubbish, yo utilicé un objeto pronombre. Y como el objeto pronombre que yo reemplazo por the rubbish es it. Entonces, ya no repito the rubbish y yo digo, I'll throw it away. Y estoy diciendo lo mismo. Ese pronombre, uh, objeto pronombre it, lo único que está haciendo es omitiendo decir the rubbish. ¿Sí? ¿Qué es lo que sucede cuando tenemos objetos pronombres? El objeto pronombre siempre va a ir entre medio del verbo y el párico. Nunca lo puedo mover como en el ejemplo 2B. Así no lo puedo mover. Yo solo puedo decir, I'll throw it away, mas yo no puedo decir, I'll throw away it. No, that's not possible. Tenemos el ejemplo de Take your shoes off. Si yo quiero cambiar your shoes, estoy hablando en plural o singular. Am I talking in plural or singular? Plural. 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 Of course, plural. I'm saying your shoes, tus zapatos. Entonces, me estoy refiriendo o qué pronombre podría omitir your shoes. Yours. Then, Then, I mean, el pronombre es a they, porque yo me estoy refiriendo a ellos, los zapatos. Aunque no son personas, pero son ellos, unos zapatos, right? Entonces, yo cambio ese they, que es un personal pronoun, lo cambio a un objeto pronombre, ese va a ser them. Entonces, yo voy a decir, take them off. Take them off. Sí, quítate los, los qué? Los zapatos. So ese, ese object pronoun, ese objeto pronombre, lo único que va a hacer es sustituir la palabra para no repetirla. ¿Por qué lo hacen de esta forma? Why do they do that like that? Porque los americanos o las personas que hablan inglés quieren acortar las palabras, no hablar mucho. Por practicidad, teacher. Yeah, it makes it it's like easier for you to say things. Es más fácil cuando usted omite y se acorta la frase a que usted esté diciendo un montón. You see, even when you say, take your shoes off, 
take them off. ¿Sí? Más rápido. Take them off. Y estoy diciendo lo mismo. Teacher. Yes. Es como que si eh, tuviera la para una persona y le dijera, eh, dame, ¿qué? Dame esas, ese, esa mochila, digamos. Y yo uh -huh. le estoy diciendo, dámela. Dame, exactly. That's dame eso That's o dámela. Ajá. No, so dame es, esa mochila, ¿verdad? No le voy a yeah, mencionar we, todos. ¿no? Sí, ¿verdad? omitimos de la doble repetición. Okay cosas, no ser repetitivos so that's, that's the main thing so, espero que todos estemos entendiendo, do you guys have any questions, preguntas no questions at all uh, yes teacher um, mm -hmm. significa phrasal phrasal, phrasal verbo phrasales, that's what, that's what we call it phrasal verbs Mm -hmm. Any other question? Well, okay. So let's move on. So that was number two. Ese era el número dos. So now let's go to number three. Al número tres. Which is price of verbs with objects, but the verb and the particle are inseparable. ¿Qué significa que este tipo de price of verbs no los puedo separar. So, siempre se tienen que mantener juntos. So, I will, I will have to follow. Tendré que. Eh, to follow the formula. Seguir la formula. So, I will have to say. Verb. Plus the particle. Plus the object. Okay. So, we have an example here. She takes after her mother. She takes after her mother. As we can see, we have bird, particle, and the object, which is mother. See? Bird, particle, and object. So, as you can see here, it says note. ¿Qué significa? Que yo no puedo decir she takes her mother after. ¿Por qué? Si yo digo eso... El sentido cambió y ya no va a ser un phrasal verbs anymore. So that's why we have to be really careful about it. So uh, these type of phrasal verbs, most of the time, with, uh, with the particle after, most of the time, those type of phrasal verbs will always be unseparable. What does it mean? That I cannot move one word to other place. Okay, are, are we understanding? Yes, teach. All right, so we have another example below that says looking after a baby is hard work. So once again, I cannot say looking a baby after is hard work. No, why? Because we cannot separate the bird from the particle. We cannot do that, never ever. So is there any question so far with number three or is sure. understandable? Mm -hmm. In this case is um, only for the one type of verbs or the others, irregulars or regular? Oh no, it doesn't, it, uh, it does. It, it doesn't have a specifically uh, type of verb. No tienen, un, un, un específico tipo de verbo, no. No significa que solo porque es uh, regular o irregular, lo voy a poner. Maybe all verbs we can, eh, como les voy a decir, eh, puede que todos los verbos puedan llevar, digamos, after, o sea, no necesariamente solamente algunos. Oh, yeah, yeah, yes, I mean, yes, as, as you can see here, take, we have taken. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. So that's another verb. So uh, of course, when you put the particle right next to another verb, automatically it's going to change the meaning. So it's not the same takes after, it's not gonna be like the same as looking after. For example, in the verb, in the part of us, turn off the light, eso es solamente para ese verbo. Porque, yeah, claro, turn es como regresar, pero turn off es como, como apagarlo, ¿verdad? Ya, yeah. if we say turn, si, si decimos turn, es como dar vuelta, turn. Turn off. 
but it would say mm -hmm. turn off automatically when you when you put together the particle off, it means apagar. Mm -hmm. So you see that's the difference. So, but okay. it, that verb doesn't belong to this one because if I say turn off, I can say turn it off. So I can change it. But in this case, it's not separable. It's inseparable. So that's the reason why, okay? So it's Como el verbo levantarse, get up, digamos. Get up. Uh, Porque get es como otro verbo, ¿verdad? Yeah, but in, like, up. I can move that. Because uh -huh. hey, uh, you can get me up at three. Get me up. Uh -huh. It like I can say something like that, or you can get, uh, you can get what Nelson up, or you can get up Nelson at three, something like that. So you can move that. See, ¿sí? eso pertenece al número dos porque sí lo podemos mover. Sí lo podemos mover. Ah, oh, okay. All right. So in number three, in este número tres, la mayoría cuando tienen the particle after. No los podemos mover mayoritariamente. So that those are going to be like when you see the particle after, you have to know that you cannot move that. So automatically you are going to recognize that that belongs to phrasal verb number three. So do you guys have any question till now? Yes, teacher. I have a question. Mm -hmm. eh, en, este, en este caso sí importaría el orden, ¿verdad? Eh, what do you mean? Eh, te... Por ejemplo, ahí dice she takes after her mother, que hace referencia como ella se parece a su madre. Eh, uh -huh. Y el otro dice not, well, she takes her mother after, que algo así como que ella este, lleva después a su madre. Entonces aquí se importa el orden. Yes, aquí sí es necesario que usted siga el orden de la fórmula. ¿Qué quiere decir? Que el, el particle no se puede apartar del verbo. Porque si lo apartamos del verbo y lo hacemos como dice aquí abajo, she takes her mother after, es como que yo... Cambia el significado. Y me la llevé después. Ajá, correcto. So it's, it cambia automáticamente el significado. So entonces, it's necessary for you to follow the order or to follow the formula in this case. Okay, teacher, thank you. Mm -hmm. So any other question? Teacher, ¿qué significa hard? Hard, hard. difícil. Okay, thanks. Uh -huh. Okay, so you, there's, there's no any other question. We're going to go to the last one, which is number four. And it says, fry cell verbs with three parts. ¿Qué pasa en esta? Son fry cell verbs que tienen tres palabras. So we have a verb plus particle and a preposition. In this case, as number three, the verb cannot be separated from the other parts. In este caso, como en número tres, no podemos separarla. We have to stick with the same thing. Verb, particle, preposition, object. Say we have here, I am or I'm looking forward to the weekend. So when we say looking forward to or look forward to, it's like, estoy esperando el fin de semana. You see? So we can never separate that. Quiere decir que yo no puedo mover the weekend, que es el objeto, no puedo decir, I'm looking the weekend forward too. Or I cannot say, I'm looking forward the weekend too. No, I can never say that. I have to follow that formula. And the three parts needs to be together. They can never be separated one from each other. Okay. Now, we have another example. <clears throat> Sorry. Which it says... You go now, I'll catch up with you later. So I cannot say I'll catch you up with or I'll catch you later up with. No, I cannot say that. 
So we still have to put the three words in the same order to make sense. Now, the last one, going back on promises is not a good habit. Mm -hmm. So do we understand the four differences that we have in Frisal verbs? Si entendemos las cuatro diferencias. Yes, or so, so, or more or less. Yes, be sure. All right, so I hope so. So I hope. Uh, I think, I think this, uh, this phrase of verse, uh, we have to, te lo digo, tenemos que memorizarlos, o me imagino que es igual, verdad? I mean, there's there's a big list, let me tell you, a big list of phrasal verbs. Uh, as I always tell you, is probably you will not memorize them like all of them uh, at once, but it will be really nice if you take like one per day. If you try to memorize or to use one per day, and you know, to see some examples, to verify when do you, you can use it, when you cannot. So those small things are going to make a big difference at the end. Why? Because if you study at least one each day, at the end of 30 days, it, it's gonna be 30 frisal verbs. So that's the challenge for you actually, okay? So is there any other question or- Teacher. Yes. Eh, en español se lo voy a decir. Eh, uh -huh. Esto no se refiere a un tiempo para ejecutar la acción, ¿verdad? Porque eh, si miramos looking es como que lleva la fórmula a ng, pero se está uh -huh. refiriendo a un futuro próximo, ¿verdad? Yes, yes. Eh, ¿qué, qué, ¿Qué quiere decir esto? Que los frisal verbs se pueden utilizar en diferentes tiempos. Ajá, eso es mi problema. Más acá aquí de, tengo I'll, which is future. Will. Catch up with. Will. Uh -huh. Si yo digo took, took them off, te los quitaste, took them off. Ya no está en presente. It's not the same as saying take it off or take mm -hmm. it off. If I say took them off, automáticamente estoy hablando en pasado. So you see, los frisal verbs los puedo utilizar o jugar con los tiempos. Okay, thank you. So, no questions? Teacher, sorry. Mm -hmm. um, Il, um, existe sin abreviar? Yes, the, it's, it's if I say I will. Yes, oh, okay. Yes, I will. It's, it, but then if you make the abbreviation of that, it's I'll. I will. Uh -huh, it's the same. You can say I will or you can say I. And it's going to be the same. Thing. I'll. Okay. Thank you. Teacher, pueden okay. ir en forma de pregunta y en forma de negación. Uh, negatives? Like in, in questions, like, for example, using, if I say, uh, why, don't you, why don't you take them off? Si yo te pregunto, Supongamos que yo te estoy diciendo que te quites los zapatos. Uh -huh. Digo, ¿por qué no te los quitas? Why uh -huh. do you take them off? Why uh -huh. do you take them off? Si te fijas, estoy utilizando una question. So I'm saying por... La negativa también. In negative no? at the same Why time. Can... And you uh -huh. can say, I don't want to take them off. No me los quiero quitar in negative. So you can see, si pueden jugar con todos los tiempos. So you can use either one of them, questions, negatives, present, past, past participle, ing, all of them are going to be possible, see? ¿sí? Por qué? Pero si tener cuidado con el orden, Porque... Yeah, of course, the order. Yeah, that's going to be, yeah. Okay. So, Thank you, teacher. Any other question? Alguna otra pregunta que tengamos or are we clear? Well, I'm, I'm, I'm guessing that's, that's a yes, that's clear. So just let me, let me just check. It's too difficult, teacher. Not really, not necessarily, <laughs> but I mean, 
Es como so la guys. suma de un montón de cosas juntas. Yeah, I know, I know, I know. Por eso es que les digo yo una cosa al día, dos cositas al día. No nos compliquemos tanto, porque no lo vamos a aprender todo en un rato. So, just let me, oh my God, what did I do? So, I was trying to share the screen with you, but I changed. Okay, here we have it. All right, so here, here we have it. So, in this speaking activity, oh my God, what's going on? Jesus Christ, there's someone to help me today. Let me see. No. Algo diabólico está pasando aquí. So I really don't know. Okay, here we have. So, um, okay. So this is just a conversation that I need you to have in five minutes. So just take a screenshot. No necesito que lo hagan en pareja. So, sino una persona en la primera línea, otra persona second, another, the third, the fourth, the fifth, and so on and so on. So you can do it in five minutes, okay? What I need you to do is to everyone to participate, ¿sí? Necesito que todos lean aunque sea una línea. Aquellos que nunca dicen nada en clase, ¿verdad? Que están ahí como ghost. Okay? So let's go. Let me see. Uh, uh. All right. So please, everyone, join your rooms. Uh -huh. eh, eh, vamos. Y Vidal, okay, yo me quedo de último. Y así continuamos con los otros, bro. Okay. Okay. Sí. Hi, Jack. Hi, Jack. Hi. Next. Ah, William. Sí. William, sí, el de la B. Ahí está. Ok. ¿Cómo? Comencemos. Se ve de nuevo para. My cool workers, management, manager, and the man that pays is very good too. I'm saving up for a new car now. Oh, nice. Oh, do you have any idea?
Okay, guys. Uh, probably because of the time, some of you were not able to participate. Some others probably did. Uh, but I mean, I do appreciate for those that are always participating. When I check your groups, I can see that some groups are always there participating and sharing and talking, but some others do not want to participate. So, well, that's up to you guys, okay? So another thing, please guys, try to speak English, okay? Not that much of Spanish, you know? Like in El Salvador, everyone speaks Spanish. Try, teacher, so I know, I know, but at least try to do the things or to say the things that you already know. Tratar de decir las cosas que ya saben, ¿sí? Porque no podemos estar diciendo, hey, compañero, ¿cómo digo esta? ¿Sí? En inglés, ¿cómo diría? Hey, how do you say that? You see? Frasecitas que ya se sabe. Eh, sí entiendo que se ven tentados a hablar español. Pues that's, that's normal. Es normal. Because we speak Spanish. That's what we speak. But, I mean. Nos da vergüenza. I mean, uh, I know. Not even, I mean. Eh, es tiempo de, de perder la pena de decirlo como lo intentamos decir. Si está un inglés medio ratatá, como dicen para ahí, está bien, ¿sí? Está bien, así se empieza, ¿sí? Así empezamos todos one day, so we can do it. So, uh, ¿Qué posibilidades hay que usted pueda leerlo o antes o después para poder nosotros corregir lo que no hemos dicho? I wish I could do that, pero la razón por la que yo hago eso, se supone que al final, cuando ustedes lo lean, deberíamos de tener integrantes y luego yo corregir. But because of the time, por el tiempo no lo pudimos hacer así. La próxima, lo que vamos a hacer. Nos podemos ayudar entre nosotros. Ustedes mismos. lo leen de la manera en que ustedes piensan y luego participamos todos y escuchamos de qué manera se pronuncia. ¿Sí? That's what we're going to do. So, recordarles, chicos, for tomorrow we have calibration. See? ¿sí? Hasta mañana tenemos calibración. So, if you haven't complete section number four, please try to do it so you don't have any issue at the end. Okay? So, that's going to be all for today, guys. Thank you so much for attending today to the class and see you guys tomorrow. So, have a good night. Bye. 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 Bye.